Diablo 4 had its open beta recently and like many of you, I had the chance to try it out and see what all the fuss is about. How's it going guys? Mr. Holton here. And in this video, I'll be talking about things that I liked, didn't like, and whether I think it's worth buying Diablo 4 on June 6th when it finally releases. Now, I want to make it perfectly clear that this is the first time I've ever played a Diablo game, which means that I'm completely unbiased here and I have no real expectations for it as a sequel like many of you might have. This also means that no, your boy here is not sponsored in any way by either Activision Blizzard or anyone affiliated with the product of this game. However, I am very much familiar with Blizzard as a company overall, as I spent over 10 years playing through World of Warcraft and its subsequent expansion since early 2005. So I'm by no means a newcomer to Blizzard's games. With that out of the way, here's a small overview of the story before diving into the nitty gritty gameplay. Diablo 4 plays out in a world called Sanctuary and you, being the protagonist, has the job of stopping a hot demon mama called Lilith from taking over the world. Mommy! Or well, that's kind of the gist of it. But talking about the story more than that is entering into spoiler territory, so I'm just not gonna do that. Now how much this follows up on Diablo 3 or any of the former games I just can't say, but knowing Blizzard we can assume that they've at least retconned some elements of the story to suit their storytelling needs. Or maybe I'm wrong about that, we'll have to wait and see. In any case, I do want to compliment the cinematics team and the graphical artists because the game is mostly beautiful. I was running Diablo 4 on PC with an RTX 2080 and an i7 CPU on max settings that I could mostly run the game at a smooth frame rate. Yes, there were times when the game froze up for a couple of seconds here and there, but I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that it's probably because I was recording on the same PC. And again, it is the beta version, so there might be memory leaks here and there and other smaller technical issues that hopefully gets fixed until launch. Case in point, I'm not really worried about the performance of the game because it's mostly been a smooth ride. And I gotta mention that I really like that your character model doesn't lose any detail during gameplay, and I can see what Blizzard is going for with trying to make gameplay to cutscene transitions as smooth as possible here, even if it is somewhat choppy right now. The cutscenes are also top tier as always. Blizzard simply just doesn't miss with their cinematics, and I expect Diablo 4's cutscenes to be the very best that they've made yet. Now, let's talk about one of my favorite categories, character creation. And well, as an avid RPG fan, I gotta say that I'm pretty disappointed with the lack of interesting customization options. And before you say anything, yes, this is the beta version of the game, again, so this could be subject to change before Diablo 4 actually releases, but so far, my opinion is that Blizzard could have added a few more options to just make your character stand out a little bit more, because as it stands, the pre-made appearances just aren't very good. Again, maybe this is just how Diablo games usually are, so this might be something that most of you guys are just used to. But I'm not, which is why I felt like it was worth bringing up. In any case, you can choose to play between five classes in the game, these being the Barbarian, Sorcerer, Druid, Rogue, and Necromancer. So far, I've had the time to play as the Necromancer and the Sorcerer, so I can't speak for the other classes, but comparing the strength of the two that I did try, the Necromancer is already leagues above that of the Sorcerer in terms of overall power. From what I've been able to gather from other people, the Necromancer tends to be one of the stronger classes in every Diablo game, but to be completely honest here, the difference in strength between the Sorcerer and Necromancer is damn near astronomical, and as far as I understand it from my own experience, this is mostly due to the Necro's ability to summon skeletal minions. And if you set up your abilities just right, you'll be curb stomping damn near anything you encounter throughout the first area of the game. Speaking of encounters, you can only get to level 25 in the open beta, so it is difficult to say just how the power scaling will work for later stages of the game. Chances are, however, that all the other classes will be getting a pretty major buff or the Necromancer will get nerfed because, as it stands, I very rarely had any challenge throughout my short stint of gaming. Yes, there was one boss that I was having some difficulty with, but it was several levels above me and I hadn't entirely figured out the best spec yet. Still, I can't imagine going up against the encounter with any of the other classes and comparatively I probably had an easier time with the Necro. Now for the uninitiated, Diablo 4 is a point and click game, and as it's also oriented around real time action, it can be quite jarring for anyone who might be more used to games such as Final Fantasy or Baldur's Gate 3, as Diablo 4's gameplay is quite fast compared to those games. 
This isn't necessarily bad, however, as when you start getting the hang of the general gameplay, you also get a certain flow throughout the game. But this is also where it started to fall apart for me. You see, as I progressively got stronger and stronger throughout the game, I started to get less and less interested in the game. Maybe this is due to the fact that I was playing as a necromancer that may or may not be way too powerful right now, or maybe it has to do with the core gameplay loop. And to be brutally honest with you, I think it has to do more with the latter of the two. At its core, it's pretty obvious that Diablo 4 is sort of like the ultimate power fantasy. I mean, you face up against the literal lords of hell throughout the previous game, so it's no wonder that the protagonist has to be extremely powerful in both story and gameplay. But I gotta say that slaughtering hordes of demons and other hell spawn at the push of a button gets pretty tiring, especially when you start unlocking more and more powerful abilities. Now, I'm not saying that it isn't fun, which it is, in the beginning. But at a certain point, I just started to lose interest in the gameplay loop because all you're doing most of the time is clearing the map of weak enemies a la Dynasty Warrior style. And you generally don't have to put any real effort into it. And this is kind of where I started to remember why I could never really get into Diablo from the very get-go. Just like footage I've seen from Diablo 3, Diablo 4 seems to be just as heavy on the grind. The grind for better loot, for stronger weapons, for prettier cosmetics. And listen, there's nothing wrong with having these elements in your game. I mean, it is a staple of the RPG industry. And if anything, I am a sucker for transmog systems in video games. But the gameplay loop of Diablo 4 is essentially all about pushing those dopamine buttons over and over again, hence why most of the enemies are so weak compared to you. It's designed to reward you for playing the game as much as possible by giving you better stuff, better abilities, and more wardrobe appearances for your character. But this is where Diablo 4 loses its charm for me because it's trying so hard to make you feel rewarded all the time. And at the end, instead of feeling rewarded, you start feeling fatigued. Or at least I did. In simpler terms, I really dislike the huge focus on grinding for gear to this extent. Instead of just focusing on making memorable characters, tight gameplay and an amazing story. Of course, some of you may be going, dude, you don't know what the f you're talking about. Diablo's always been like this. In which case, hey, you're absolutely right. <laughs> As I said at the beginning of this video, I'm exploring this series for the first time with this game. And this video is all about my first impression, meaning that I could be factually wrong on how the game is designed. I'm just talking about how I've experienced the game so far. And that doesn't mean that I'm necessarily right. In the end, the one thing that I'm still somewhat invested in is some parts of the story. But then again, the only character I've managed to get interested in is none other than Hot Demon Mommy herself, and I'm really curious as to what she's planning for the future of Sanctuary. All in all, what should really matter here is whether I had fun with the game and if I consider it a memorable experience. And well, yes, it was fun, again during the starting hours of the game. However, that unfortunately wore off pretty rapidly. Again, maybe it's a balanced thing and maybe Blizzard manages to make the game more fun before launch, but as of right now, I would not pre-order it. Will I be playing it on launch? Probably, yeah. I mean, I have a YouTube channel to run, and so I'll most likely cover the game more later on, and I am genuinely curious whether Diablo 4 will turn out to be better in later stages of the game. As of right now, though, it's not good, it's not bad, it's honestly pretty mid. Remember to subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed this video. And have a great day. Mr. Alton, signing out.